Hello everybody and welcome to Meryl Talks Pop. I'm your host Meryl. I hope you guys are doing great and getting ready for the holidays. Um, me, um, I just wanted to make this video before the year ends uh, because you know how December is, you know, we have a lot of get-togethers and then comes Christmas and New Year's and stuff. So I just wanted to make this video before the year ends. And well, this video is actually very, very special to me because I would like to share with you uh, the music that built me. Yes, I mean that this is the music I grew up with and I owe this all thanks to my dad. Um, I invited him to be part of this video but he was like, no way, my English is not that good and I'm so shy and well, he doesn't want to make it. So anyway, but he said you can borrow all my CDs and well, whatever, <laughs> and talk about them. Um, ever since I can recall, music has been part of my life. I have a very musical family and not because my parents play any instrument or anything um, but because there was always music in my house or in the car wherever we were. So uh, I grew up listening to music since I can remember and I owe it all to my dad because I, not, that, not that my mom doesn't have a good taste in music but she's more into this traditional Mexican music which is good, I love it, and probably someday I will talk about Mexican music, but right now I want to focus more on um, what made me uh, move into you know, pop music and the music I grew up with. So I, I owe this whole thing to my dad. So let's just start by saying that the first album I recall listening to was Michael Jackson's Off the Wall. This album I have, you know, like a flashback from when I was five and we were riding in the car and my dad used to play this um, but in cassette <laughs> and in the car and he used to play it like crazy. It was amazing and, and I was like five, must have been 1994, so the album already had like over 10 years, but my dad was obsessed with it. And I remember not understanding a word Michael Jackson was saying, because I didn't speak English back then, um, but I knew I just wanted to listen to it over and over again and dance to it. I knew his music felt so cool, so danceable, and I don't know, I, I guess he was like my first inspiration for pop music. You know he's a king of pop music, so um, it's... It's really good to remember that though back in those days, this was what we used to play the most. And my dad has always said that this is one of his favorite albums in the world. And I can tell you that it's also one of mine, too. So uh, I think this opened up the path for pop music for me. So this is great. My favorite song from this um, album is Rock With You. I adore that song. It just um, brings me back to when I was such a young kid. And I have those flashbacks of me listening to it, so thank you, Michael. Thank you, because this album opened up the door for big pop stars. And uh, a lot of pop stars that I admire right now have mentioned that Michael is like their biggest inspiration, so I get it. <laughs> Moving forward, we have Barry White's The Collection. This is a greatest hits album but I also remember my dad playing it like crazy, especially when we were on the road. We used to travel a lot to this state that's called Puebla, which is an hour and a half away from here. And we used to go like pretty often because we have rel relatives over there. So uh, every time we traveled to Puebla, this album was playing. So I have very good memories of it. And it is actually pretty similar to Michael Jackson's Off the Wall when it comes to danceable songs, you know, um, that R&B pop rhythm. I, I mean, I just love it. Uh, Barry White also uh, has an amazing, amazing voice. So he's, he's like so powerful. I love the harmonies. I love the music. And even though I didn't understand a word, I, I know that the time that we used to do from here to, to that state was like so short to me because we used to be listening to this and so it was like so fun playing it. It starts with one of my favorite songs from Barry White which is You're the First, The Last. 
my everything, which is like an, a disco anthem to me. And there are also great songs in here. Um, uh, can get enough of your love, babe. Uh, let the music play. The love's theme. I mean, it's a very great album, and I don't know. It just brings me back to those days when I was in the car with my parents. So I owe a lot of this dance pop music that I lo that I love thanks to Barry White. Then. I don't know why I don't have the original case of this one. I guess it got lost. But I have The Carpenters, The Greatest Hits. I cannot begin to tell you how much I love The Carpenters. I remember my dad played them, but I think I owe this more to my aunt, my dad's sister, that she used to love them and play them a lot. And uh, my dad didn't have any of their albums, so I, I think he only have like vinyls. So. Um, my dad, my mom bought me this cassette <laughs> back in the day, and my aunt gave me another cassette too. So I used to play them a lot, and especially in, like I have mentioned in my other videos, I, I went through a lot of bullying when I was in fifth grade. So I used to play them all the time, and this album in particular um, always makes me feel good because it made me feel good back then. So it keeps doing it. I love the Carpenters. I, I think Karen's voice was amazing, and she's such a big inspiration to a lot of um, female singers from from our time. So um, the Carpenters are definitely part of my favorite groups of all time. Then this one's really interesting. I have here Daryl Holdren Oates, Rock and Soul Part One. Your great hits. We got this album thanks to a friend of my dad's uh, who moved to Miami or something and he left a lot of his stuff and so he gave this to my dad um, and god we used to play it so much. I, I think the whole John Oates are like um, you know the inspiration to a lot of boy bands from that came in the 90s early 2000s because they are so pop I don't know what what part of rock they're talking about because I don't hear any rock when I, whenever I play them but their music is always so positive so fun to listen to and uh, this album in particular this greatest hits has like the best the best the best of their songs uh, my personal favorite um, I think it would be Maneater which inspired Nelly Furtado's Man Eater, If You Don't Know That. Yeah. Um, I love She's Gone, which was later recorded by Catherine Sita Jones. Oh, she changed it for He's Gone instead of She. Uh, and I love Your Kisses on My List and Private Eyes. I mean, the whole album is pretty cool. But um, I, I think that this is like the first boy band that I recall listening to before I got into, you know, Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, so, yeah, I I love these guys, and if you guys haven't heard heard, heard them, please do, please do, because it, you will find a lot of pop, amazing tracks here. Oh, this one's really special. Carl King's Tapes Tree. Yes, I love this album. It's, um... One of the ones I used to play the most when I was, I don't know, 12, 13, which must have been 2001. This album was released in 71. Good lord. <laughs> like 50 years ago. Can you believe that? I mean, my dad was like so obsessed with Carl Kings and, 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 sh and he said like, you have to listen to her. Uh, you, you gotta listen to her words. And back then I started English, so I started to understand more of what she was saying and um, I loved it. I love it and I think that she's also a big inspiration to a lot of female singers from our era. I know Sarah Burrells, who is actually one of my favorites, has quoted uh, Carol as one of her inspirations and I, I do gotta say that, that she has such an amazing songwriting skills. Uh, 
every song from this album is, is amazing, but I think my personal favorite is It's Too Late. Love that song. It's so powerful how she is saying goodbye to a, someone that she's been sharing her life with, that, that she's no longer happy with anymore. And it's like, we may see each other again sometime, but for now, let's just call it quits and move on. I, I love, now that I'm older and that I get to understand better her lyrics, I'm like, wow, she was like so deep with her words. Um, You've got a friend, it's such a beautiful song. Um, Will you love me tomorrow? I mean, every single uh, song from this album is pretty special. And yeah, I think it, if you could ask my dad who's your favorite female singer, he would definitely say Carl King. And yes, this is, uh, I think, one of the Bible <laughs> from, uh, for my dad. <laughs> so, like the Bible for my dad when it comes to a female singer. And totally recommend this album. Then, oh god, I have this America's, The Greatest Hits 2. I remember when my dad bought it, like, a thousand years ago. But I didn't know who they were, so when he bought it, he was like, you're gonna listen to this, you're gonna like um, this first song. And the opening song is A Horse With No Name. I fell in love with it. I was like amazed. I love America and I have such great memories with this album too, because um, my dad used to play it a lot when we were having get-togethers in our house. And it always brings me back to those times. It's it's a, such an amazing album. Uh, all the songs are beautifully written. Um, it's for me, the America is like one of the underrated bands from the 70s. Um, even though they were pretty famous in the U.S., I, I think they they deserve better in other countries because their music is amazing. And I totally recommend you guys to listen to this. I think that thanks to America, I got so much into the music of Jason Ross, which is pretty similar, you know, that kind of guitar thing, you know, the, the rhythm, the harmonies. Um, I, I think that uh, he got inspired by them. And, and it's amazing. I mean, uh, A Horse With No Name is definitely a personal favorite. Ventura Highway, which was later um, used for uh, Janet Jackson's Someone To Call My Lover as a, you know, background music, um, Tin Man, uh, Lonely People, and Sister Golden Hair. I love those songs. Um, they're more like a, not rock, but more like a soft rock, if you can call it like that. Um, soft rock pop music and an amazing, an amazing group. They are still together. They haven't visited Mexico. Um, but if they would, I, we would definitely go <laughs> because they're um, one of our favorites. Then I have here one that, oh my god, brings me back to those days when I was uh, leaving uh, primary school and entering junior high. It's Paul McCartney's All the Best. I, I have a lot of greatest hits over here, but uh, well, this one uh, is in particular one of my dad's favorites. Um, my uncle gave it to my dad I think for his birthday don't remember but we used to play like crazy and I was so obsessed with the songs and I used to borrow it for him from him and play it in my room um, we were expecting a 12 year old girl to be playing music from 2000 2001 uh, when NSYNC was at his was, was at their best and other pop singers, but I was obsessed with Paul McCartney. So this album in particular has um, a great um, selection of songs. It's all great hits. We know Paul McCartney has like a lot of singles, but this selection in particular is pretty cool. Starting with Ben on the Run, which is one of my personal favorites from Paul McCartney. That guitar at the beginning, those harmonies, I mean, Everything is perfect from that song. I love the collaboration he did with uh, Stevie Wonder on Ebony and Ivory. There's also Let Him In, which I found it to be like one of the best pop songs from the 70s. Uh, Say Say Say, which features Michael Jackson. Um, uh, My Love, which is a beautiful, beautiful ballad. 
he wrote it to him, his former wife who passed away, Linda McCartney. And there's also, listen to what the man said. I mean, every single song from this album is like non-skippable, you know? I, I can play it like crazy and never get tired of it. And since my dad is a huge Beatles fan, well, this is also part of that incredible collection because of his love for the Beatles. And I will get there in a minute because here I have my personal favorite, a band that I adore, and that's Electric Light Orchestra. I love this band, this British band. Uh, I think that the member, founding member, uh, Jeff Lyne, is a genius. I don't, I don't know if I can call him another way, but genius. I mean, every single song from the Electric Light Orchestra is perfect for me. I had the chance to go see them uh, in 2013. I went with my dad, obviously. It was one of the best concerts I've ever been to. I had so much fun. Everybody there was my dad's age, and there was me, <laughs> having the time of my life, singing to all their songs. It was amazing seeing them so close because I was like pretty close to the stage, and uh, getting to greet them and and like almost touching their hands. It was. It was amazing. I, I mean, I was like in front of legends, and I had one of the best times of my life with my dad back then. And uh, I know he remembers that concert pretty well too, because he was—he told me I never expected to assist to this concert with my daughter. I mean, you were expecting for my dad to go with—I don't know—my mom or his friends. But he chose me because he knew how much I loved them and we had the, the time of our lives. And that concert was also very, very special because Electric Light Orchestra was the opening act. <laughs> opening act that lasted for two hours, which was, yeah, great. <laughs> and then came Alan Parsons' project that played for another two more hours. So. It was amazing! I was like, I can't believe I'm with my dad seeing these legends. So, this is... If you can tell me to choose my favorite from all that collection that I just showed you, I would definitely choose this one. Um, I love every single song from Electric Light Orchestra. My personal favorite is Last Train to London, which, as you know, was... Um, the chorus and the music was used by Atomic Kidding uh, uh, for their be with you uh, single um, I love Mr. Blue Sky B puts me in such a good mood uh, and you know those the, the piano at the beginning din, 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 and, and, and the lyrics I mean they are more like a rock and roll band but they all also mix a lot of pop so I couldn't choose uh, you know like five of, of their songs because I love all of them but definitely my personal favorite is The Last Train to London and probably followed by Evil Woman and Telephone Line those three are the best now I just talked to you about the ones I remember the most my dad used to play like a lot of music I know you guys might be expecting uh, to for me to show you some Beatles but guess what my dad didn't play them much when I was growing up because he mentioned me that um, he played them a lot when he was growing up and he, that he somehow got tired of them and that's why uh, he didn't play them much but I still like them I mean he played them not so often but when he did I liked them and there were also other groups and other singers like Billy Joel I love Billy Joel um, the Bee Gees the Bee Gees which are also super pop <laughs> I know I think that they inspired a lot of groups from the 90s too because of that um, you know disco pop rhythms that they use um, Fleetwood Mac I love Fleetwood Mac love them um, there's also 
the Credence Clearwater Revival. My dad used to love them. And my mom did too, so we used to play them a lot. Especially when it was Friday night and we would hang in our living room to just talk about our week and stuff. And we used to play them a lot. In the living room or in our little cantina <laughs> uh, where we keep our um, how you call it the drinks <laughs> um, I have such good memories from my dad's music that I could tell you all about him like for hours but I just wanted to let you know what uh, what inspired me to get so much into pop music and these albums in particular I think that are the ones that I um, cherish the most that's the word I cherish the most and the ones that I think that led me to that path of pop music and you began having your own taste and when I played my music to my dad he actually liked it so I always have like those memories of me and my dad playing music um, sharing both of our, our, our tastes and he used to tell me, you have, I think that band or that singer has a bit of inspiration from such and such and such that he used to play and so I couldn't be more thankful with him because he helped me, you know, he helped me to this thing I'm doing right now and I couldn't be more proud of my dad <laughs> and thankful with him. Uh, we've been to, to a lot of concerts together. Uh, he's like uh, my best friend when it comes to that part because uh, uh, whenever someone doesn't want to go with me, I'm like, Dad, you want to come with me? And he's like, okay. So we've been through all these um, old bands, concerts like Electrolyte Orchestra, the Alan Parsons Project, or Air Supply. We went to an Air Supply concert two years ago. And he has been there with me for Britney Spears, <laughs> and Ali Furtado, um, Hilary Duff, poor dad. I mean, he was like, Why am, what am I doing here? Why isn't your mom here with you? And I was like, I want to co go with you. So, But he, he always helps me have uh, the great time when, when we're in a concert. And well, that's a little of what I like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know what kind of music uh, did you grow up with. Uh, I'd love to know what inspired you to have that uh, musical taste you have right now. Because I think all of us grow grew with, with our parents' music. And that's what makes us who we are today. So I just wanted to share this video with you because I think it's very important for you to know uh, what I loved since I was little. and. I'll tell you a little bit about my dad, whom I wish was here, but like I mentioned, he was like, oh no, I'm so shy and I don't speak English so good, so uh, anyway, dad, if you're watching this, thank you, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, because thanks to you, I do what I do now in this music thing, so, well, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I will be seeing you soon, I don't have any interviews for December, because you know, like I mentioned, uh, December is a very difficult month, but I'm in talks with other pop stars that I, I'm hoping to interview them uh, at the beginning of the year, and other videos ideas that I've been working on. I'm sorry I haven't, if I haven't been so much around, but uh, you know, I have a daughter, um, I have to take care of my house, I have my work as a translator, so sometimes my life's a mess, but I try to take the time to do this and stay in touch with you. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a big thumbs up and I will be seeing you next time. Bye.